Indeed, and we're talking about software in particular, but beyond that, what about future technologies, IoT, blockchain, for yeah. example, even the buzzword AI, right? Yeah. How are these solutions ultimately going to um, help this pivot in the energy space? And are you working with any of these technologies? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Look, uh, uh, but in 2015, we started to do research around artificial intelligence. Our technologies are based on first principles of engineering, the physics, the chemistry, the math that sort of rule the world. Uh, but then we started to research how can we integrate artificial intelligence capabilities into these first principles capabilities because we believe and our customers have actually agreed with us that the deployment of AI in these very complex and dangerous to operate assets uh, requires first principles to provide the, the rules of the road, the guardrails for AI. Mm -hmm. So today we're deploying hybrid models, models that are based on first principles enhanced by AI capabilities. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing we're doing quite well. Then we're also then looking at what else? Chat GPT, of course, everyone is talking about that. But then, you know, for us, uh, we believe that a, a technology that is out there, that people talk about quantum computing, for example, will be quite disruptive once it, it becomes commercially available at scale. So we're keeping an eye on, on quantum computing and because it will revolutionize how quickly we can solve very complex problems in, in these industries, including the research of uh, new molecules in pharma for pharmaceuticals, for medicine, new products uh, for chemistry, for especially circularity around new plastics as well. So, so quantum computing is also something that we're paying a lot of attention to. Indeed. Um, Antonio, just taking a step back, let's get real about the transition because 80% of the global energy mix is still totally dependent on fossil fuels. We've only got about seven years to really move the needle before <laughs> some of these 2030 yeah. targets. It's pretty unrealistic that we're going to get there, right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree? I think, I think it'll be a challenge. Uh, if we look at, at the pace of uh, scaling that is required for uh, hydrogen, for biofuels, electrical vehicles, uh, you, you do see that it will take some time to scale these technologies. This is why our focus is around driving efficiencies for our customers. You know, the International Energy Agency estimates that 40% of the emission reductions that are required to get to net zero carbon emissions have to come from efficiencies driving efficiencies in these very asset intensive industries. So we're focused on that. At the same time, we're helping our customers scale these new technologies through the understanding how they need to be designed, carbon capture and sequestration systems, hydrogen systems, the incorporation of these, uh, of these technologies in, in, in their own operations. Uh, but it will take time. So through 2030, a lot of efficiencies uh, beyond that, scaling CCS, hydrogen, biofuels, and then you start talking about new technologies into the 2040s. But it will be, it will be a challenge, and, and, and speed is of the essence, but uh, scaling will take, will take some time. Indeed.